Here we've got a, a pair of APA 7.5 monoblock amplifiers and the, the owner has actually made some measurements on, on these and says that the distortion is very high. Uh, it's reading about 3% into with a 1, one watt output into an 8 ohm load. So that seems very high and uh, so we're asked to have a look at uh, what's gone wrong here. And normally, the first thing we would do is whip the covers off and have a look inside. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and make a measurement uh, uh, first off, just to get a reference uh, as to what's going on. Here we are looking at the measurements in these amplifiers then. And I'm outputting 10 watts. I've just set that nominally just to make a, a starter measurement. Um, and the first thing we see here is that the distortion number it's nowhere near as what's actually being reported. Um, so, you know, that the number suggests there's not actually that much wrong with this amplifier. We do see that the second harmonic here, it's dominating. And in these amplifiers, the first amplifier stage, there is a balancing resistor that it's a variable resistor that's used to null that second harmonic. And I think if we adjust that, and I'm set up to do that right now. We're going to adjust that live and we should see this second harmonic drop down and when that drops down our distortion is going to improve uh, dramatically. That's the wrong way obviously. So just tweak it backwards here. And there we go. It's disappearing almost into the noise floor. And we're down to about 0.0 0.0037% distortion, and that's that's say the you know, data sheet says 0 0.004, um, and so I'm quite happy with that result. This amplifier seems to be working just fine once we do the adjustments there. Since we're inside this APA 7.5, then uh, I thought it'd be interesting to compare with a Mono X. So the APA 7.5 is on the right, Mono X is on the left. And what we see is it is pretty much the same. Uh, the main board is essentially identical. On the Mono X, we've got this extra little board here that contains eight capacitors. And what's happening here then? So if we look at the 7.5, this capacitor here is a DC block uh, for one of the loads on the first gain stage. And that's just basically stop any DC current. So that's a 22 microfarad capacitor to ground. Uh, it's a big value capacitor and that sets the, the lower frequency response of this thing. So this is 2200 micro. On the Mono X, basically what they've got is these three capacitors in parallel. These are 1000 micro each. Uh, so we've got uh, 4000 micro as opposed to 2200. This other capacitor here, this is a coupling capacitor between the first gain stage and the second stage which is a buffer uh, and this is a, a non-polarized capacitor uh, particularly for that for that purpose and what they've got in the Mono X is they've got two larger capacitors um, and these are these are actually polarized but they've got them back to back so that makes a, a non-polarized uh, capacitor uh, and that's really the main difference the, these two capacitors here, it's essentially the same story. On the input stage, there there's a non-polarized electrolytic, and they've basically just put a bigger value in here. Um, so that's the difference between APA 7.5 and Mono X. The main board's identical, reference designators and everything are identical. The only difference is these uh, this capacitor arrangement. And actually, if you if you move on and you look at the Mono X 200 and 300 you find that they've done away with these capacitors altogether and they've put in a DC servo uh, to, to do the uh, uh, coupling between one stage and the other. Uh, so the, the differences are not dramatic, they're very subtle. Anyway, this APA 7.5 seems to be in good shape, so we're going to get the covers on that and back to its owner. 